don't see that it's live. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hello streamers, are you ready to host a live stream show super easily, super quickly, and that you don't have to waste any time or like frustration getting set up for a more complicated setup 
We're going to show you that today. And we are going to dive into the questions of exactly how should you go live super simply, super easily in this time of craziness where we're encouraging you to take quick action, positive action forward. You can get all of the fancy, fancy, fancy stuff, but right now I want you to go live quickly. I want you to go live easily and I want you to get going with that content that's in your brain and that you need to be able to connect with your audience on a deeper level. And live streaming is of course the best way to connect with your audience. So we're also going to tackle how to get the best quality from a super simple setup. And we're gonna give you a demo of the service that we're actually using right now called StreamYard. And I have a special guest with us, Gage from StreamYard. Welcome, welcome, yay. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm so excited to be on the, uh, on the show. Absolutely. This is um, a long time coming and uh, you guys have done a fantastic job with StreamYard, which is a what we call a level two service. Um, and so I'll walk you guys through all of that as well. Um, and then we'll dig into some demo time. Are you ready, Gage? I'm ready. All right. So before we do, just a quick shout out to Jesse and the Artist Haven and Gail and Merle and Kenna and La Lafever. I hope I'm saying your name right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for participating and ask your questions. We're going to get down to business, but we'll also tackle Q&A at the end as well. So David, you're here too. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I am, but I'm trying to run everything. I was putting comments up. So oh, okay. So do you want to focus on that? You can't. Yeah, I'm I'll doing I'm focused on comments and stuff. You just leave me out of it. You guys have a good time. I'll be here when you're done. I'll just I'll keep playing a little bit of Wait, music. Wait, hold on. I have one what? question for okay. you real what quick. What is that? How is the experience? So David is running this entire stream from StreamYard. What do you think? It's it's very easy. Like I'm gonna go full screen here really okay. quick. Just to show. I've got this little dashboard here. And I can just click on whoever I want on screen. I can go double. I can go just solo. I can solo out Luria. I can solo out me. So it's just very, and then right here are the comments. I can just click show and boom, there's a comment and then hide. One thing that I like too, that I've noticed that is different than most, I can see our members here. So Mike that Shaw's a really member. Cool. So when I click show, you can see right next to Mike's name, there's that little icon. That means yeah. he's a YouTube member on our channel. That is awesome because then we that. can favor our members and show their comments and not everybody else's. <laughs> Although kidding. we love everybody. We Just love kidding. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. But oh, yeah, hilarious. so I like that. So yeah, that's, that's right. really cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for that. I'll let you get back to producing. You guys, you don't need a producer. You don't need a David. You can do all of this yourself. We just like to go extra around here. You know us. But um, we'll get down to an actual demo here, and Gage is going to deliver that. But first, so um, Gage, you know, we talk about the four levels of live streaming, uh, and I want to dive into this and the quality differences and how we can get better uh, quality from a what what is a cloud-based service, right? So we have level one, the phone, just go live from the phone. And by the way, we just released a video on how to go live from Facebook and the app um, on our channel this morning. Uh, and then level two would be where StreamYard lies, which is uh, a browser-based, but really what you were saying before we started is a cloud-based service. And I really like that distinction. Can you walk us through what that is? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a really cool uh, subject just because stuff is there's tons of stuff is changing in that sort of um, yeah. area. Um, but yeah, so StreamYard, um, everything sort of has its uh, pros and cons, right? So the nice thing about StreamYard is you don't have to have a very powerful computer, right? Like you can do a live stream from a Chromebook yeah. um, or fr from a $200 laptop. And the reason it works it, from those low power computers is because it's it's a cloud based service where um, you're sending your feed to StreamYard and your guest feed are coming in separately. And all the mixing and the transcoding and all that complicated stuff is having is happening on like StreamYard's computer and and not yours. Um, but that means that there's a few different things you should keep in mind to make sure you can get the best quality uh, possible. So compared to the other uh, levels, your internet is extremely important uh, with a cloud-based service because 
the stream can only look as good as the information that that gets to that service. When you're using a service that runs on your own computer, which um, most of them run on your own computer, it doesn't have to travel anywhere, right? So right. You're, you're, you're not susceptible to a poor internet connection. So uh, a, a hardwired connection, which I'm breaking the rule right now, I'm on Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> but hard, <laughs> yeah. hard, hardwired connection is, uh, is a great idea. And then make sure that you don't have you know family members watching Netflix or Hulu or something like that. Um, so just make sure the, the internet is stable and solid and you'll have a really good uh, experience. And then um, also, I mean, obviously I don't have a great webcam. I'm breaking all the rules today. But, well, uh, <laughs> well, let's explain why real quick because you got stuck in Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I travel back and forth between the States and, and Canada uh, quite a bit. And yeah, right now, obviously, because of all the craziness going on, I'm stuck in Canada. So I'm a bit of a, I'm on a bit of a unique setup. Hopefully I can yeah. uh, upgrade it. <laughs> so. Oh no, it's, you're doing, you're doing great for that, for that uh, situation. His, his, all his, his uh, pro equipment is here in uh, Oregon. So yeah, anyway, we'll you keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then like you guys always talk about, I mean, obviously having a, a good webcam and a good mic will go a long way as well. I mean, but that's true for, for any uh, live streaming service. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing is just make sure you have a solid internet connection and your guests have a solid internet connection. And that's the number one thing you can do yeah. to make sure you get a good quality output feed. Okay. And then of course, you know, the, yeah, the, the camera, like you guys, I'm on an A5100 with a capture card. We talk a lot about that around here as well. So when you think about quality, every piece of the puzzle, every piece of the chain is a part of that quality difference. So we're getting a really great stream today because we have all of those pieces in place, right? So that's something that uh, you should pay attention to. But I was, I was laughing at construction. Like <laughs> Stuck in Canada, eh? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and I saw Mike earlier say after David's like super quick demo, he was like, oh, now I'm interested. Like, so there's a lot of great things. About oh, did you want to well, say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say, so So Mike also said, I can't get it right now because uh, it's, it's unless uh, it's yeah, free, they have that. a free version. So, yes. Yeah. So you guys, um, the link is coming to you in the description and in the comments to sign up for StreamYard. You get um, a two-week free trial by using our link, correct? Yes, and, that's right. And walk me through what's the difference between a free service, the, between the free service and the paid services. Yeah, absolutely. So we're at the freemium product, right? So there's an entirely free tier of StreamYard, but with uh, with that link there, you guys will get a two week trial to test out the the paid features. But uh, we have we offer a lot on the free version, so you can go live for up to twenty hours uh, per I mean, month. That's ridiculous. Like, yeah, it's quite a bit, right? Unless you're us, you're not going live for twenty <laughs> hours a week a month. <laughs> yeah, so you get twenty hours every month. Um, you can do like you can you can have up to yourself and five guests on screen. You can do all the layouts. You can show the comments on screen, uh, the banners. Um, you won't get the overlays, and you'll have our little duck in the the corner there on the free version. Um, but other than that, you have most of the features. And then when you uh, upgrade or in that same trial, you'll have access to one of the most popular features, which is um, simulcasting or multi-streaming. So you can go to like Facebook and YouTube at the same time, which I know people really like. And all the comments come into the studio, which I know is important to people to sort of be able to manage those different audiences Definitely. effectively. So you'll see the little Facebook comments and the little uh, YouTube comments. And then of course, you'll be able to upload your own logo and put up your own overlays. And uh, you'll also have access to recording. So your streams will be recorded and you can download them after. I know a lot of people like the, um, we have an option to download the audio file. I know a lot of people like that feature. Yeah, definitely. And I've actually used that, um, the download feature uh, fairly recently, actually. Um, it was super helpful, super easy to, to do. Um, and, and honestly, um, so there are, you know, in your space, uh, in the StreamYard com competition space, right? Like there are a lot of options out there and you guys, you know us, we only recommend what we trust the most. And this service, StreamYard, has been the most stable, most fully functional option out there. Um, and especially with the simulcasting capabilities, without going to level three, like, holy cow, that kind of sealed the deal for us. But in addition, what I really fell in love with when it comes to StreamYard is all of the tutorial tips that they give you. So Gage, I think you did a fantastic job with walking a newbie through 
what they need to know without overwhelming them in order to get the best possible stream that they can and to know how to use your service. I mean, it's super simple anyway, but like I, you guys did a fantastic job with that. <laughs> that means so much coming from uh, you guys though. Thank you so, so much. But yeah, I mean, that was the whole goal, right? Is um, the things have changed a lot in the last couple of years, but when we were first starting StreamYard, the whole thing is like, I want my grandma to be able to do a live stream. I want it to be someone that doesn't know what a browser tab is to yes. still be able to figure it out. And like we did a lot of, I mean, I tested with my mom who's not tech savvy and my grandma. It's like, what's if my mom can figure out how to use it, we've done well. So that was sort of the, the goal. And, so and it passed I, the mom test? It passed the, um, it took it took a few iterations, but okay. eventually we, we got there. <laughs> I love that. All right. So shall we, do we have any questions that I need to tackle before we get into this demo? Uh, Marilyn says, can you stream to YouTube and Facebook with the free version? Uh, either or. So you can stream to YouTube or Facebook, but the, mul the multi-streaming is a paid feature. Yeah. And it has to be guys. I mean, everything that they add uh, adds extra load to them and they pay for all of this stuff, right? Y you guys have to realize that when it comes to free, you know, to be honest, I know that we're living in a time right now where it's like, uh, um, and everybody's kind of conscious of their, their money spent, but you do want to pay developers for doing the work that they are working so hard at, right? Well, and, and people don't understand server costs. Like they don't right. understand the, the expense of actually processing all of this data. It is not cheap. Yeah. So, you know, like the price, uh, what is the price after on the monthly gauge after the free? Yeah, there's two tiers. So we have the basic plan, which is 25 a month and the professional tier, which is 49 a month. Right. So which that's is not bad at no. all. Like, that's I mean, really, really good for what you I, get. I was looking at a service uh, not too long ago and it was, and this is a, for mobile phones. Okay. This guy sent me this. He's like, I want you to look at this. It's for mobile phones. It's, it's kind of like a, another switcher studio. Well, it was, they had a free version that didn't have very many features. And then the monthly was $450. So, yeah. you know, there, there are people that are charging, you know, outrageous prices. But the thing is like StreamYard understands that they want to help more people. And so, you know, yeah. I think you said you're using Google services or something like that, which is, you know, that pretty dependable uh, when it comes to servers. Yeah. We use GC, GC Google cloud platform and AWS. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go, Sherry, those are the prices. But yeah, I just wanted to come in and say people people just understand that it's it is very expensive. So the fact that they even have a free version is is amazing yeah. right now. Awesome. Okay, let's get down to the demo. So Gage is gonna kind of take over here. I want to show you what you can do and I want you guys to understand how easy this is uh, and how simple it is. So Gage, I'm gonna let you take it over. Awesome. Thanks. So yeah, right now you're, if you, if you just signed up for StreamYard you went to StreamYard.com and signed up, you'd be taken to uh, this dashboard uh, here. And yeah, you can see the broadcast section and the destinations uh, section. And we've tried to organize um, everything. So it's really focused on supporting scheduling your broadcast because we thought, we always thought that was really important that it's a good idea to schedule things in advance. So we wanted that to sort of be the focus of when you first entered the, uh, the product. So I'll go ahead um, and quickly create a, a broadcast. And you can see all of these are my uh, destinations. So I obviously do a lot of testing. So I have a lot. You probably wouldn't <laughs> have this many. Um, but yeah, you can just select which ones you want to go live to. So if I wanted to do a simulcast to this sample page and this uh, test group, I could I could do that. You just select which ones you want to go live to and that will create a uh, multi-stream. And the coolest thing or, um, is that they, it actually schedules them as well. So you can schedule uh, your multi-stream. So if you did a multi-stream to YouTube and Facebook, it would create a post on Facebook and an event on YouTube. Um, and you can share those links out to your audience uh, beforehand. So I'll just get really creative here and call this uh, test and test. Oh and man, so creative. <laughs> I wish I had your creativity. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can use this schedule for a uh, later option and choose your, your time and thumbnail image. But um, Which is what we did today for this stream, by the way. Perfect. Um, and then you can yeah customize for each destination if for whatever reason you wanted to make one description slightly different for a different audience. So I'll just go ahead and create that. And um, I don't want to get bombarded with uh, <laughs> if, you, if you guys if I go view on so you can go here and see uh, the posts on Facebook. I'm not going to go over there just because yeah. <laughs> my DMs are going crazy right now. Uh, but um, yeah, so that this is nice. So if you go to the more section, you get some information here, and this is an important distinction. So this invite a guest link 
is what is sort of the portal to the StreamYard studio. So uh, that link is how you can invite uh, your panelists or your guests into the studio with you. It's, it'll be something like StreamYard.com slash uh, a string of random letters. So you want to make sure you don't share that out with your public audience, if, unless you just want random people joining you, which I never right. recommend. Like, I'm surprised how many people do that, but I don't think- Oh my think, God, seriously, yeah. like no pants. Like, I always have to say when I do something like that, like pants are required. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? there's gotta be some rules. <laughs> We do have some options for it though. Like there are, like we have moderation options, which um, I know a lot of people enjoy because it is cool for like- um, so Just open I, it up I, to your community. Yeah, for YouTube yeah. community streams. I know a lot of people like it. So we do have an option to require guests to authenticate. So okay. basically what that means is when they join, they have to log like log in with YouTube. And so that, I mean, that, that adds some, like you can block them then. So if they yeah. join and they're doing something bad, you can block that particular uh, account. So there are some options there. Uh, so I'll just go ahead. Oh, and then, of course, the view on uh, this is the one that you do want to share with your audience. So that will take them to the post that they can, you know, hit the little bell on or leave a comment um, on Facebook. Or if I went to YouTube, that would be there as well. So I'll go ahead and enter. And yeah, these are the tips that um, you guys were talking yeah. about, which, uh, yeah, we wanted to make sure that uh, just whenever we can can sort of educate. I mean, we try to. So that's that's nice. And uh, yeah, we've got this little tester here to make sure the mic's working and you can customize your settings in this cam and mic section. Um, when we actually have a green screen option, which is kind of cool, you can, uh, um, it was, I, personally, I'm not a huge fan of them. Like, right, I, no, despite, the, yeah, despite the fact that I have a green screen behind me, like if you have, if you have no other option, it's, it's cool. We, we added it because I mean, if people really want it, so we added it and I'm yeah. testing things all the time. So that's why I have a, a green screen, but the option is there. Uh, so you can choose your camera and, um, resolution and whatnot. Uh, so I'll go ahead and enter. And yeah, this is what we call the broadcast uh, studio. And um, that's what uh, David was showing earlier. Um, and your guests will appear at the bottom like I am here. So you just click to add them uh, to the stream. So if I had guests, there'd be tiles next to me and I'd have the ability to add and uh, remove them. And you have quite a few options here. So that same invite link is here if you want to invite uh, your guests. Um, you can you can share your screen and your guests can share their screen as well, which is what I'm doing, obviously. And now, um, just a clear point of clarification, it's the same link for every for all guests you want, correct? You don't have to have a separate link for every guest? Yep, so it's on a per stream basis. So yeah, uh, yeah so like say we did, a, we we're doing a multi-stream to YouTube and Facebook, and that was our particular multi-stream, it would be the same link for all your guests. But if you did a stream the next week, then it would be a, a, a new link just in, um, because we didn't want old links hanging around that old guests could join on. But I know some people do want a permanent link, so we might add an option for that at some point. Um, but that how, that's how it works uh, now. So you can see the comments uh, section here. So this is just an, an example uh, comment. But if uh, I was actually live, you'd be seeing comments come in from my, my group and page, and you'd be able to pop them up on, on screen. Uh, we have this, uh, oh yeah, the banners as well. This is a popular feature. We, you can, uh, basically these are just lower thirds or some people call them like calls to action. Um, again, very creative title. I guess I was testing something earlier of, of sample, uh, but it could, yeah, it could be like you know, check out my ebook or um, go to my website or whatever. And uh, these can also be tickers, so you could have um, you know an announcements uh, ticker going. One one feature that I know people like a lot is uh, oh, is also in here. You can create different folders. So if you have um, if you if you have banners that you use regularly, you can sort of put them in a folder nice. and organize them that way. Um, so I know some people like that feature. We also have this uh, brand section, which is this is sort of where you have all the options to customize your stream. You can uh, choose your your color and whatnot. Uh, if you're on a, a paid version, you could upload your own uh, logo. It doesn't have to be. It could be your company logo. Right. <laughs> uh, you have the uh, overlays here as well. Um, you can see I've got lots of David's doing the things that he's showing you guys, by the way. So when you see things like our LSP logo pop up right now, that's David actually showing you what it looks like in the stream too. And you have a couple themes to choose from. So if you like, uh, the, the, the original theme, everything's sort of bigger. So if you like bigger comments and bigger lower thirds, that's, that's an option for you. And then it's the same deal as the banners where if you have, I know we have a lot of people that sort of. They're sort of like social media managers or they work for an agency where they manage a few different social media accounts. And um, they enjoy this feature where you can have uh, my naming here isn't very good. But imagine these were different, uh, like you had company A and company B and they right. each had their own set of assets. You could switch between them uh, here and See, totally huge. manage your overlays and stuff, which that's people really like. That's really nice. Um, but yeah, those are the main features. And then, um, so yeah, if you had, if, if you're inviting guests, they'd pop up here and you'd be able to pop them up on screen and have a conversation with them. 
Um, you'd see an indication here that you're live on both uh, platforms. Kind of a unique thing that we have is if you uh, want to remove a destination midstream, you can actually do that. I know some people, what they like to do is uh -huh. do an after show on just like one platform, which is kind of interesting. So they'll end it on a few and then just keep going live on another one. I don't know how appealing that is to the people watching, but I'm surprised how many people no, are a it, fan it of it. No, it works. We've done it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I think that awesome. covers the, the basics for sure. Fantastic. So that was a quick demo for you guys. And remember, um, StreamYard, uh, the link is coming to you in the comments and it's in the description, livestreamingpros.com slash StreamYard. That is our link. We are partners with them. But you guys know if you're new around here, by the way, if you are new around here, type new. I want to meet you. But if you are new around here, just understand that we never, ever, 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 ever promote something we don't trust. Uh, we do an extensive, uh, you know, uh, evaluation beforehand and that we only partner with people that we know will give you the best results. So that's why we limit the things that we talk about. Um, and that way you don't get confused with things that are going to frustrate you. So Gage and his partner have done an, a fantastic job with this service. And again, it's really important to do things quickly right now and get the job done. <laughs> Can a user stream into a Facebook page and group simultaneously? Yeah, yes, you can. Um, personally, I, I prefer sharing just because it's, if you run ads and stuff on, with your Facebook account, I feel like it's easier to manage than sort of creating these separate streams. Yeah. But to answer your question, yes, you could simultaneously do it. What I'd recommend is scheduling it to a page and then sharing it out to your group or the places you want to go to. And while we're on the topic of simulcasting, remember guys, simulcasting is part of the paid plan, either the basic or the pro. Those are That's what it's called, right? Basic and pro. Um, and not the free version. However, you can do a lot with the free version. And to answer Barry's question, um, Facebook does not have rules against simulcasting. Uh, they did update their rules. And so you're clear and good to go there, Barry, and anybody else who was worried about that. All right, what's the next question, David? I'm gonna let you control it from here. <laughs> David, Earth to David. <laughs> oh, he went to the bathroom, I guess. Oh, there it is. I tried OBS software to go live yesterday, but it didn't work out. Is StreamYard better? So, oh, so OBS would be what we would consider a level three, which is downloaded software onto your computer. And yes, we do see many people who have issues with OBS just because it's, um, it, so our recommendations on a level three are Ecamm on Mac and vMix on a PC. The where StreamYard really is beautiful and is that it's so super easy. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Getting tongue tied here. <laughs> is that it's super easy, right? You just, you log on to StreamYard.com and you literally just, hit that go live button like there's a couple clicks and you're good to go um and so that's where it it, it uh it it thrives Would yeah absolutely say? it just depends what you're trying to do right if you've yeah. got if you've got like four dslr cameras and a crazy setup like you probably don't want stream yet you probably want a, a different a tool for that yeah 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 exactly but i will say we are bringing so i am bringing ecamm and i'll get to Corey's uh question here in a minute but I well, I just wanted to show, like, real quick, I just yeah. wanted to show, like, I'm bringing in my full vMix production, so I can switch to all my cameras. Oh, that's cool. I can pop up, I can pop up our... <laughs> Little overlays. <laughs> to just do it, guy. <laughs> so, I mean, I got my full production in here, and, like, when I did uh, uh, my show with Nick Nimmin, or came on Nick Nimmin's show... The other day they were like what the word like people don't realize you can bring a full production yeah. into this and it it does make it much easier for doing interviews so if you're using ecamm like Luria's and she's just getting ready to speak to that you can bring in your full production you guys using vmix if you have a, a group of people that you want to interview you can still bring in your vmix production and, and have your vmix production for your other streams but for something where you're wanting like a group a, a, a setting you can totally do something like this and and not lose the quality. I'm bringing in my right. same mic that I use and everything. So my whole production is here in StreamYard. As is mine on Ecamm, right? So I'm doing Ecamm and I can go into my different, I, I don't have it set up right now, but I can go into you know all my different cameras and scenes in Ecamm and bring that out. And where this is really beneficial, like especially if you're using Ecamm on the Mac, like 
to do interviews on your Mac, you're often overloaded with the CPU usage um, and on and on your Mac. And so if you have a lower power Mac, you could literally set up Ecamm, right? <laughs> and then go. Um, did you know people are like, the, the? have you thought through this gauge of like this possibility? Um, yeah, like I, they go from like, I, it surprises me how many people actually actually do it. But yeah, I have, yeah. I've, 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 I've seen it done, yeah. So, because for I mean, the guest thing, they use both. They just like the guest thing, so they use Ecamm. Exactly, because yeah. it makes the guest thing so much easier. And so just like, there are all kinds of possibilities here, guys. <laughs> um, can you lock the room after people guests arrive to where no one else can come in? Uh, no. So, I mean, the link is uh, the link is unique, right? So if you only share the link with the people you want to join, no one else is going to be able to join, but there isn't actually a lock button. I definitely understand how that could be useful, especially for a community stream. So maybe at some point we'd, we'd have that, but no, you can kick people. So if you have a bunch of people join and you're at the max room capacity is 10. So you can have 10 people in the studio and six on screen. So you can sort of cycle people in and out. Um, so you can kick people out, but there isn't like a, a lock button. People will just be like, we'll see a screen that's the, the room's full. Yeah. And um, you were also, I saw a question earlier about um, the quality and I, we were talking about quality earlier, but I don't think we hit this point um, in terms of 720, like that's the max it is right now. But can you talk to us about the potential for the future of a higher quality? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I think just because we've been 720 for such a long time, a lot of people think that that's some sort of like a uh, cap or, or limit, but it's. Uh, it's mostly just like business decision, right? Is we Our focus when we started was just like, let's make this as easy as possible. And when we first started, a lot of platforms didn't even support 1080. Like Facebook was all 720, Periscope was all 720. So it's like, why are we going to offer uh, 1080 when everyone's 720? Yeah. But now it's now it's a very, like it's people ask a lot for 1080. So it's it's higher on our priority list and we understand the, the demand. Um, so we can do it. It's just a matter of, uh, like we talked about before, um, it costs a lot of money because we have to mix all that stuff. We have to send it out, which means um, uh, we have to price it accordingly. And it's an end. It's a it's it's a pricing problem more than an engineering problem. But we we will uh, we will offer it eventually, and it will be the same thing where it's like, yeah, you can get a great 1080p feed, but make sure you have a solid uh, internet connection because that's going to be the most important part is getting all that data because you're sending more data now. Your internet connection is even more important than before uh, to us, but we're constantly uh, improving things. And we're constantly iterating. Like we run all our own uh, video infrastructure. So we're able to do some clever stuff too, right? Where um, like we can do some stuff where, okay, inside the studio, if your guest isn't in a good, isn't, doesn't have a great connection, um, maybe they're a little bit uh, blurry or, or breaking up for you. But on our end, uh, because we can tweak things there, we can sort of build up, I don't want to get too technical, but we can sort of build up a cache of, of their data and add a bit of delay to the whole stream so it's like in the output feed, everyone looks great, and but you are able to maintain the real time connection in the studio. So the point I'm making is there's just lots of cool possibilities, and we're gonna get better and better because we uh, we love working on this stuff, and we love giving you guys the the best experience we possibly can. And then d does can you record directly in Streamyard? Yeah, yeah, you it's talked about that earlier. It uh, it's not local recording, so some some people think it's local recording, but it streams to our servers, so it's it's cloud based recording. So basically. It stream you stream to Streamyard, and that's what that's where the recording happens, and you can download it uh, after you're done. Cool. And then also, Mike, you could also if if a service doesn't have that, you can just download the file from YouTube or Facebook or wherever you have streamed in most cases, and just grab it from there. Well, I would never recommend downloading from Facebook. Well, there, he's doing audio though. Audio oh, is oh, fine. Okay. So I want to answer Beth's question too. I'm still confused about the relationship between Streamyard and Vmix. There is no relationship between Vmix and, and Streamyard. All I'm saying is. If you are somebody who uses vMix, you can bring your full production into StreamYard. That's the only relationship. Like there's no direct connection or anything like that. It, it's not not what we're saying. Just saying if you use StreamYard or uh, uh, vMix or if you happen to use Ecamm, you can, you, we could use uh, your vMix setup for Skype. You can use it for Zoom. You can use it for StreamYard. You can use it for many different things wherever you bring in a webcam. So that's the only uh, relationship. I keep wanting to hit, I keep bringing up these comments and I'm hitting my comment button oh. <laughs> on my X keys to take them away. I'm not um, used to this. And, and the reason that we point that out guys is because, uh, we have so many people who are already using Ecamm or vMix. And the, be the beauty of that is that you can make the whole guest scenario way easier. So Beth, if you haven't started using Ecamm or vMix or anything yet, 
then StreamYard is the perfect place to start because it is super easy. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying it. It's super simple, super easy. Like literally took me no time at all to set up. <laughs> That's awesome. Super glad to hear that. That's the number one goal. Yeah, we, we have three pillars we always talk about, which ease of use is the very first one, yep. um, stability and uh, professional streams. So we always try to hit on those three things when we uh, add, add features and whatnot. I like that. I didn't know that about you. <laughs> what else we got, David? Uh, and I think, guys, it's, I've seen several comments about David, uh, his quality versus my quality. Uh, I think there, there's a setting, David, that you need to fix. Cause no, I'm, I'm at on, 720. I mean, I look, I look crystal clear on my end. Do you? Yeah. I don't think you do for them, but we'll fix that. Well, later. I think it's just different people's case. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> All right. David's what else? What other comments? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Ecamm user here. Uh, Skype really slows things down. We'll try and bring StreamYard for interviews. Yes, exactly. Well, okay, so setup, Lloyd, right, Lloyd, Lloyd, you can't, you're not going to want to bring StreamYard into Ecamm. You're going to want to bring Ecamm into StreamYard to do it that way. So I think don't, that's what he's saying. Well, no? he, he said oh, try okay. to bring in StreamYard for interviews. Oh. So I'm just making sure that you're, you're not talking about bringing, because like to bring StreamYard in, to Ecamm would use up a lot more resources if you go the other way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Do you want me to pull from comments that uh, we had Here's before? Here's Artist Haven. Quick tip from her. If you're having guests, make sure they have their Chrome Safari updated to the latest version. That one little thing helped me solve 90% of the issues that came up. And speaking of guests, and thank you, Tish, for uh, for helping the, the rest of the community out and giving tips. Um, another thing about interviews is that you need to make sure that the people you're bringing on do know that they need headphones, that they need, you know, a high quality mic, that they, you know, just like the framing, right? A lot of guests will just come in like looking like this and see how weird that looks. Like <laughs> try and try and do like, you know, Gage, you mentioned professional streams. Like we always are harping on professional streams and there are tiny little things like, so David, if he were my guest right now, I would say, hey, David, can you sit up a little bit more straight and adjust so that, you, yeah, like come in to the, to the other side, kind of come in centered, right? So work with your guests. If this is an important guest interview for you, to just make it look kind of even and professional as opposed to just people like off to the side like that. And, you know, it just little things, little things. <laughs> what else we got, David? Um, Corey is asking, can you use a DSLR for your video feed? Yes, if you have a capture card like the Cam Link 4K or something like that, a USB. Oh, come on, focus, Sony. I got to get it. Like it's got, I got it on center focus. Yeah. <laughs> Sony fail. <laughs> Did I go off autofocus? Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Uh, the Cam Link 4K, it's a USB capture card, and then you bring that in, and that becomes like a webcam. So you can bring in. Now, most DSLRs don't work, but the mirrorless are starting to work. So you just have to verify that the camera has clean HDMI and all that other stuff. There's a lot of things. Uh, and we talk about that over. Corey, I thought you were a student. Um, yeah. If you're a student, then shame on you for asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, go over to livestreamingpros.com for slash studio and we answer a lot of those questions over there for you. Yep, for sure. One, one thing to keep in mind for that on um, specifically StreamYard is until we add 1080, you'll get a better like a better quality feed if you match what we send out. So if you send in, like since we send out 720, you'll want to try to send in oh, okay. 720 whenever possible and that will give you better quality. Good tip. Uh, six string Brian is any tips on audio latency? When I speak, my guest only hears me four seconds after. Are you talking about through StreamYard or Brian? Because we're talking about StreamYard today. Yeah, specifically, so if you're not guys, I see a lot of questions coming in about other things. We're focused on StreamYard today. Um, and we do have our Friday live Q&A that's open to anything that you want to talk about. So join us then at 10 a.m. Pacific on Fridays. I'm using the Go XLR right now, Tommy. So that's <laughs> that's been my best purchase in my studio is the Go XLR. And Thank you, West Coast Chicano, for the super chat. Thank you. Oopsie, Tommy I'm posting my comment button. <laughs> Tommy actually uh, mentioned earlier that uh, you, Gage, have a um, live show that you do. Yeah, yeah. We go live every single week, Dan and I do. Um, if we've been doing it for a long time now, I think we go live every week and we're on episode 66 will be the next uh, awesome. episode. And yeah, just from the very beginning, we figured we should, I mean, if we're making a live streaming tool, we should go through the same experience right? as our uh, users every week. So, <laughs> totally. yeah. so and Brian, it's been great. 
So Brian Wait, did on. follow up and say that he what he is indeed talking about stream Streamyard. So, so you should be able to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say you can you can read the comment. <laughs> So yeah, any tips on audio latency? When I speak, my guest only hears me four seconds after I'm using a mic and a mixer. Would it be better to not use uh, a mixer? So you should be able to use a mixer. Like mixers are great. I know a lot of our users like it for adding the sound effects and things like that. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm, on, I'm using the Go XLR right now and you're hearing me, there's no latency. So it, if it's with a guest, it could be their internet connection. Yeah, so there's a few different things it, it could be. Yeah, you, or even... It, it depends who's, I, I, I don't remember how it was phrased exactly, but depending on whether it's you or your guest with the latency, it could be an internet thing. But we also have support. So like if you're ever having, having issues, just streamyard.com slash contact and there's live support and they'll help you troubleshoot and stuff like that. Uh, and yes, yeah. Tommy, I use, v, I use the GoXLR with mm -hmm. everything. All of my audio comes from the GoXLR now. Um, and what I was trying to ask Gage uh, before we went on to a different question was, and Cynthia is asking, what day and time is your stream? Gage. Uh, Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific, we go live. Sundays, 6 p.m. Pacific, and you can find that info on their website, I'm sure, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, on all our social channels. So if yeah. uh, on Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, that's one cool thing that maybe people don't know is we integrate directly with LinkedIn, yeah. um, which there's not everyone does. So it's it, StreamYard is one of the approved LinkedIn tools. Maybe you can get us on LinkedIn. I've been trying for like a year. <laughs> yeah, email. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk after. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I, there was one question I was supposed to ask you up front, which is phones. Uh, so can people use their phone? Can guests come in through their phone? Tell all. Yeah, yeah. So um, we don't have mobile hosting yet. So you have to start the stream from laptop or desktop, but guests can. So guests can join on the iPads, the iPhones, the the Androids. I know it's a really popular uh, request we have is, is mobile support. So at some point that will come. It's mostly a managing all the different things on the screen and fitting it there to be oh, honest yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, at some point at some point we would like to support that one thing that blows my mind is despite the fact that you can only start streams on desktop and laptop like if you are analytics we have more people using the site on phones than desktop or laptop which blows my mind so we should probably prioritize that <laughs> That's fascinating. So you guys, livestreamingpros.com slash StreamYard will get you a two-week free trial. Um, and then whether you want to stay on free or whether you want to go on paid, like whatever is best for you. But you do get the simulcasting ability at the, the paid levels. Um, again, like they are doing a fantastic job at simplicity, ease of use, and... Um, and, and helping you understand how to get the best uh, stream from their service. Uh, no, nope, Nobby <laughs> I wanted to know, will you be looking at adding an extra screen for sharing to avoid, I missed it. No, I got it. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah, Nobby, I know that's a, a popular one is people like to queue up uh, the screens. We're, we're gonna be adding um, a lot of more media sharing options in general, just because um, ease of use is the number one thing, right? And I know a lot of people don't have two monitors, so and a lot of people like to do slide deck presentations. So uh, at some point, we'll make it uh, easy to upload like a PowerPoint or a, a keynote presentation and cycle through that way. Um, and then probably also, like you said, also give the option to share uh, multiple screens. But right now, uh, things are pretty crazy right now. Like right now, we're just focused on that stability pillar and making sure we can support uh, all, all of you lovely folks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you guys are getting slammed right now, right? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's yeah. been like 40% in a week. It's like nuts. <laughs> it's a lot of new people. So bear with them, guys. You know, keep keep giving them your your uh, suggestions and requests and feature, you know, ideas. But um, just know that everybody in this streaming and video industry right now, including us, including them, all of us, uh, it is a massive amount of demand right now to do things. So... Be nice to them. <laughs> can you usually can you use your iPad Pro with StreamYard? Yeah, any mobile device. You can join as a guest. No hosting yet, but you can join as a guest on the, the iPad Pro. Fantastic. Um, I'm gonna let Gage go, and you guys, if you have continue, if you if you have more questions, definitely keep them coming. We can talk after the fact as well. Um, but Gage, thank you so much for hanging out with us, giving us this demo, having these conversations, and helping so many people with uh, simple and easy streaming. We really appreciate everything that you're doing. 
Of course. Thanks so much for, for having me on. I was so excited when you invited me on. I've been following you guys for a long time and you guys do a great thing onboarding people and helping them through the whole journey of like a level one, just starting out on the phone, which I totally agree. Like if you've never live stream, it doesn't have to yeah. be complicated. Like everyone has a phone. So that's a great way to start and just get into it. So yeah, thanks so much for having me on. It was awesome. Absolutely. You guys go check them out, livestreamingpros.com slash StreamYard. And again, if you have any questions, uh, we will tackle them in the replays as well. David, any final thoughts? Uh, no. So uh, Adam's exploit is actually asking about um, people being able to chat on YouTube in StreamYard. But the thing is, like, I, I was able to chat in in chat with Nick's stream because I just open up Nick's chat and pop it up in a new window and I could have that there. So you don't have to uh, give your guest access because I think like permissions could actually be an issue at that point because you're not connect. They're not connecting to StreamYard too. They'd have to connect their YouTube account and having multiple YouTube accounts connected could be a nightmare. So I understand why they're not doing that. So just pop open, have them pop open the chat on your channel uh, and use that. So that's the easy way around that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Hopefully, yeah, because we don't want to have to force authentication on people. So that's the right. only reason that's exactly right. And then I think I saw Adam's other question about uh, the latency. So there's like when mm -hmm. someone comments on YouTube, it's it's I think it's like six seconds ish to come in. And the only reason for that, honestly, is because YouTube limits how many requests we can make to, yeah. to YouTube. So we'll get faster. Like it's like we're constantly pestering YouTube to like increase the amount of requests we can make. Because I understand. I know you guys want fast comments and it'll get faster. It's just we have to wait for YouTube to. Like, well, yeah, why I mean, even with our chat bot, YouTube's API for chat is so slow. Like they don't. They just don't make it fast. And, and I think it's because if you could imagine the data that has to be passed through that all the time, like there's a reason they slow they slow that stuff down. So you just have a better chat experience on the pop out chat right on directly on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, if you're a guest or whatever, there's no latency there. All right. Cool. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much. All right. Um, now, I always like with guests, like I have you raise your hands and like wave bye, but you don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> Thanks so Thank much for having so me much. on. Bye, bye, Have bye. A great day, Just a little everyone. window. <laughs> yeah, bye. Bye. See you guys. Awesome. Which is awesome. He's really yeah. fantastic. All right. So that, hold on. So, was, so oh, Adam, I was ending the stream. Oh, well, hold on. So Adam, so so what I'm saying is, Adam, they're not going to ever bring in the ability for for your guests to, to respond on YouTube comments in the chat that's inside StreamYard because they'd have to have the direct connection on YouTube for every guest that you had, and they can't do that. They'd have to authenticate. So it's better for your guests to just open up your chat in a pop-out window and do it that way, uh, right directly from YouTube. So if you look at my screen right now, uh, I'm gonna go full screen, Luria. I have our chat popped open over here so that I, and I was just getting ready to respond to you, Adam, I can respond to comments right here instead of going through the, the StreamYard chat, it's much quicker. Now, if, through if I wanted to comment on Facebook as well, I would open up Facebook too uh, and do that. So that's why you won't see that uh, as a feature ever in StreamYard. There you go. All right, uh, did you have other questions you wanted to answer? Or I, I was, I was planning on wrapping it up at that point, but go uh, ahead, wrap it up. Okay, wrap this baby up. <laughs> you guys, this week we're live every uh, five days a week, of course. Uh, while this crisis is going on, we are here for you. So uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, our Friday streams are our open Q and A's, um, and we may do another open Q and A this week. Um, but we have topical trainings that are uh throughout the week and then friday is typically our just like bring it on whatever you got we'll talk about kind of days and those are certainly fun you got to bring your dancing shoes that's a requirement <laughs> and um if you are new please do let us know so that we can kind of connect with you and and meet you all right that's it for today we will see you back here tomorrow at 1 p.m pacific it's monday every day 10 a.m pacific except for tuesdays 1 p.m pacific Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, let's see. End broadcast. <laughs> End now.